So we just completed assignment two, at least the videos for it. And the things you needed to turn in for that was your sketch as just a JPEG, and then the clean cutout PNG without a background. The difference between a PNG file and a JPEG file is a JPEG file will always be a full rectangle of pixels. So if it has empty space like this one, it would fill it in with white. Whereas a PNG file is just kind of free floating. So notice the difference here. These are filling up the space, but my creature and my uh, cartoon line jumble, they are actually not filling up the space because those are PNG cutouts. In the class, we have assignment one and two organized now. Now we're going to go to our next unit. And so this video is to introduce our first proving ground, proving ground number one. And it's a little bit different than a usual assignment. You'll see that in our units that are assignments, they're dark blue. Assignments and exercises, dark blue. But when there's something a little different, like proving ground one, our group presentations, our midterm critique, our individual presentations, our final critique, then they're grayed out. That's just, they're important. You still get points for them. They're just a little bit different than assignments. So proving ground one is unit six. First of all, what are the proving grounds? The proving grounds are about creative problem solving. And to learn more about creative problem solving, you can go to badges, that's in your sidebar, and you'll see that this class makes you qualify for a creative problem solving badge. So what this is, this is a, uh, a 21st century skill and it's a micro-credential that exists outside of your college degree credit. So once you get this badge, no matter what else happens in your higher ed career, you can use it on your LinkedIn or on your, your digital resumes, and it will link back to this credential. So if we look at the, the module for it, it's way at the end. And the first thing you guys can see in the module is what kind of talks about it, right? So these are the four proving grounds you'll have to master in order to earn the badge. The first we do with what's called a creature scape. That's going to be your proving ground number one assignment. And it's all about identifying patterns. And the way we can get credit for it is by basically scoring at least 1.2 points out of 1.5. But the way the rubric is set up, it means you need to get all three things of the rubric at 100% because they're all worth half a point. So you'll see. All right. So let's go to it. How do we get to it from the regular course? If you don't want to see all the proving ground stuff, you just go to unit six. So this has a few very specific aspects to it. One is that we need to create an image that combines a creature into a landscape. And we have to make it as believable as possible. Thinking of the angle of the light, thinking of cast shadows, and form shadows, thinking of atmosphere and color correction, thinking of the scale and the angle of the anatomy with the environment. The second thing we need to do is we need to document whether it's good enough for print resolution or for screen resolution. And then give its inches, its physical format in inches, and then give its, its pixel resolution. So this image is 18 inches by 12.5 inches at 300 pixels per inch. That is larger than 8 by 10, 10 inches at, eight, at 300. So that is standard print resolution. And then we have to write a little bit just a paragraph that identifies connections between that creature and that environment. So we get to be kind of fantasy creative writers here. 
saying how that creature fits into that environment. And that will get us to think about things like respiration, about food, about camouflage, about all these different things that are really common for how creatures blend with their environments. Same thing, as long as we do those three things, you can get the creative problem solving badge. You'll get full points on this rubric, even if your image is not 300 pixels per inch, right? So if it's not big enough to be eight by 10 by 300 pixels per inch at the end of the day here, then you're gonna say that it's whatever inches it is at 72 pixels per inch, because that's standard screen resolution. And you just have to note that. Some other examples. What do we need to, to do this assignment? You need a good high quality landscape and you need a good high quality creature. And it doesn't really matter if they match or not, you know? And think of these movies like Mary Poppins, like Space Jam, where you take hand-drawn animated characters and you put them into photographic backgrounds. The kind of magic of those movies is just by paying attention to the angle of the lighting and the angle of the anatomy, you can make weird figurative elements work on different backgrounds. They don't need to stylistically match in order to, to merge believably. So these are this is the rubric. The first thing you're gonna do is accurately identify the resolution, the pixels per inch, and the physical format, the print size, and put that down. You get half a point for that. You're going to place your PNG creature file onto the landscape background in a way that utilizes a common light direction and accommodates for the angle of your creature's anatomy. And then three, you're going to write an explanation of how your creature is intended to interact with its environment. And you can get half a point for each of those, half credit for ones that you didn't do fully, and it will explain it. And then you have until the last day of the semester in the class, at least the last class day of the semester, not finals week, to improve this in order to earn that badge. All right. So, how do we get started? The best way is to make sure we have a clean landscape and we're gonna open up that PSD because that PSD has different layers to it, right? Foreground, middle ground, and background. So this is a good opportunity to improve your landscape assignment, assignment one. And then the next thing we need is the PNG, the merged online file that's combined all your layers into one cutout of your creature. And then all we do is we take your PNG and we put it into your Photoshop landscape. And if you help handled your resolutions correctly, they'll all be perfectly clean and give you lots of options for the scale. Like I might even make this guy kaiju size in the landscape. Like Godzilla. And then I can tuck him behind the atmosphere and behind the, the foreground. Even into the background, right? And I should have enough resolution when I view it at 100%. Everything still looks clean and good and believable. You can see those texture overlays are already helping me with the believability of this. I just need a sound effect, good Godzilla sound effect. Like, it's fun, fun stuff. All right, anyway, when you bring in the PNG, it comes in as what's called a smart object. And so that smart object will be referencing your external PNG's resolution no matter what size you want to use it. So I can make this same PNG like really small in the background, have him like flying up against the moon. But the other requirement for this is I don't want you to just hide your creature. So if you decide it needs to be really small in your image, I want you to then to crop your landscape so that your creature still takes up at least 25% of the composition. So let's say I did that, and then I save this as my proving ground, right? And it's gonna take some more work. We're gonna talk about 
dodging and burning and cast shadows and non-destructive editing and stuff next class. But if this was my assignment, that's about as small as my creature could be in the environment, and I made it match. Then what I would want to look at is the image size, and I would see that, yes, it's 350 pixels per inch, but it's only 4 by 6 inches. So if I uncheck resample, which will give me the real dimensions, and I say 300, at 300 pixels per inch, it's only 5 by 7 inches. A little bit bigger than 5 by 7 inches. That is not big enough for print resolution. So instead, I have to change it to 72 pixels per inch. And then I would say that this is screen resolution at 30.792 inches by 23.861 inches. So it's kind of understanding what the resolution allows you to do. Because now if I view this at 100%, it's not going to look as clean. It's going to look blurrier. But notice how my landscape actually looks a lot blurrier than my creature does. That's because this is still a smart object. All right. So we will do all of that when we start this project next class. What's fun is trying out different arrangements of your creature at different sizes, at different depths. Like maybe he'll be perched on, on this little outcrop. That's kind of cool. And then we'll be playing with the lighting and just making it all match. So I actually kind of like that composition. So I'm not going to do this all again next time. I'll review it. But I'm going to save my work. And so to do that, even though I'm in assignment one, I've added my creature. And when I do that, I say file, save as. And I'm going to now not make it assignment one. I change the name to proving ground one. And when you save as a new name, it will make a copy. And I just call this my creature scape. So it's my surreal desert. Creaturescape. And I'm going to save it not to my assignment one folder, but to the desktop as a Photoshop document, a PSD. And now in that one Photoshop document, I've got everything I need to, to do this assignment. Okay. So there's no sketching needed for this, just cleaning up your assignment one and assignment two. Then I'll create a folder. This will be proving ground number one. And then I'm just going to move the PSD into it to work on next class.